What if I told you that you can start a successful and profitable woodworking shop with just one tool? My name is Ben, and this is Make for Life Workshop. So you'd like to start a woodworking shop, but maybe you don't want to invest a whole lot of money right up front to get things started. Well, I've got a tool that's inexpensive, it's easy to learn, and you can make some pretty impressive projects from day one. I've been a woodworker for about 10 years, but I've been running my own business as a side hustle for the last four or five. And what I can tell you is this, one of the biggest mistakes I made early on was spending way too much money buying way too many tools and spreading myself way too thin trying to be ready for anything that a customer could throw my way. If I could go back and do it all over again, just wipe the slate clean and start fresh, I'd probably buy one of maybe four or five tools, learn just a few disciplines, and then build a solid foundation for my business and my craftsmanship and my skill level, and then grow from there. I'll come back to those other tools in another video, but for today, I wanna to talk about this guy, my lathe. I wanna break down just a few points of why I think a lathe is one of the perfect tools to start out with as a small business woodworker. I'll put some timestamps in the description below so that you can skip forward and backward to the parts that interest you the most, but I hope all of this information is beneficial for you. Number one, it's relatively inexpensive. Here's one of the best tips that I can give you as a small business workshop owner. Buy used tools. A lot of my tools come from family members or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or coworkers. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of modern big box stores just don't carry the same kind of quality tools that you used to be able to find decades ago. So that being said, you should always be on the lookout for something listed online or at estate sales or yard sales in your neighborhood. I picked up my lathe for $300 and that included the lathe, a couple of the cutting tools, some materials, and the stand that it sits on. I set up an alert on Craigslist that emailed me every time a lathe was listed for sale within 50 miles of me. And it didn't take long before I was notified of one that was only 10 minutes from my house. Now, unfortunately, a local maker had passed away and his family just didn't have any use for his tools, so they were going to purge his shop. It was a bittersweet moment, but at the same time, I was able to pick up some tools at a fraction of the cost of what it would have cost me if I bought them brand new. And I understand that that may not be the case for everybody, but with a little bit of patience and a smidge of luck, you just never know what you can find nearby that will suit your needs for a business. Smidge of luck. You just never know what you could... Is it icky to mention luck here? I, I hope you understand what I mean. I, I don't mean that it's lucky that somebody passed away, it, but these things happen. And to be completely honest with you, his family was actually kind of happy that his tools were gonna be going to somebody that would appreciate them and use them in the same way that he used them. So I hope in the very least that it offered them a little bit of closure. Um, I hope that makes sense. Number two, impressive projects at almost every skill level. What I have found in owning a lathe is that you'll start turning out projects that impress almost from day one. Plus, the difference between a beginner and a more advanced wood turner isn't always that obvious to the average person. A simple bowl or a tray made from walnut or spalted maple is almost always going to look good. And most of the time, people won't know whether their pen came from the finest selection of exotic hardwoods or if it came from your scrap pile. In fact, I keep a box of off-cut scrap from other projects where I had nice wood just in case I get the urge to turn something or if I need to whip out a small project real quick. Plus, I work a lot with epoxy and anytime that I'm pouring resin, I keep this guy handy. It's a pen blank mold. Now, one side is blown out and it's seen better days, but anytime I have excess resin, I can just pour it in this side and I'm left with at least one extra pen blank just as an added bonus to a project that I was already working on. Plus, there's a few companies out there that sell these really great kits for pens or for razors that make the job really easy for you. So here's what comes in a typical kit. This one's for a razor and a stand. All the components are included, and all I need to do is to make the handle and the base arm. This kit costs a little bit more than a pen kit, but that's because it comes with a metal stand and a few extra parts. 
the pen kits are even less expensive and they're super easy. In fact, this was a pen that I made out of whiskey barrel oak and I got more messages about this pen than any other pen that I've ever made. There's just something cool about having a pen that was made from wood that used to hold whiskey, right? Certainly not all, but a lot of wood turning projects just look more difficult than they really are. All it takes is you taking the time and having the patience and dedication to learn what you're doing. Number three, it's easy to learn. Let me show you the very first thing I ever turned on my lathe. It's this mallet, which is ugly, like <laughs> really ugly. It's got gouges all over it from where I didn't know how to use the cutting tool. I had to shape the handle three different times. The end of it isn't quite flat, so it never sits right, but I don't care. I still love this thing and I'm super proud of it. And I still use it around the shop all the time. Plus, it was gonna be firewood. It, it was part of a branch from a Bradford pear tree that I cut down in my backyard. And if that doesn't do it for you, let me show you another example of how easy it is to learn how to use a lathe. My nine-year-old daughter found one of my wood turning catalogs sitting around the house and started flipping through it until she found a project that she loved so much she wanted to buy it with her own money. All I had to do was teach her the basics and she was off. Now, I was standing with her supervising and had my hands on hers with the tool pretty much the entire time because she's nine. All right, so show me what you got. We made this pendant aromathy, aromathy. It's aromatherapy, right? Uh, th aromatherapy kit necklace. And I really love it. <laughs> it's really beautiful. How much do you love it? A thousand out of ten. <laughs> awesome, good deal, babe. <laughs> but let that sink in for a second. The lathe is a tool that's so easy you can teach a nine-year-old how to use it. Number four, there's a short path to profit. So after my success with the mallet, I was overwhelmed with possibility. I started making a bowl, and then another bowl, and then another bowl, and then a pen, and another pen, and a wine bottle topper, and then another one, and another one. What started out as great gift ideas really quickly turned into product. And before you know it, I was selling these things as fast as I could make them. Pens would sell anywhere from $25 to $50, and sometimes even more, depending on how specialized or unique they were. Wine bottle toppers were going for up to $40, depending on the type of material that I used. My lathe paid for itself in six months, which is really saying something if you consider the fact that I was only using it a couple of times a week. Imagine how much faster that would have been if I had really dedicated myself to using just that one tool. But let's not make this just about the business model. Number five, it's just fun. One of the reasons why I love my lathe the most is that it just helps me be creative or it helps me break out of a mental block or if I'm stuck in a rut or if I'm just bored, I'll come out and I'll throw a piece of wood in the lathe and I'll just work on it for 10 or 20 minutes and it gives me a chance to sort of shake that boredom and kind of move myself forward when I was otherwise stuck. Care to take a guess at what this is? Because I don't know. I just threw a piece of wood into the lathe because I was bored. Or how about a honey dipper because I saw one on TV? Or how about a mortar and pestle? Or how about this, made by my buddy Emmett, who makes these gorgeous little treescapes. The amount of projects that you can make on a lathe is mind-boggling, which is really great considering the fact that having just one tool won't constrict you to just one type of project. I even made a chalice one time just to see if I could. I watched somebody else make one on YouTube one time and I was like, hey, I can do that. And so I did. And I ended up giving it away to a friend, but he was kind enough to send me this footage of it. And if I might say so myself, it came out looking pretty awesome. And I still have a lot to learn. One day I hope to upgrade to a larger lathe so I can work on some bigger projects, but next up for me, I wanna start learning how to do captive rings, which if you don't know what that is, go Google it because they are amazing. So if you're one of those people who's looking to start a small business woodworking shop and you just don't know how to get started, I truly hope that this was helpful. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have, just make sure you leave a comment down below. While you're at it, if you don't mind, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. More importantly, I wanna be a resource to the community. So if you know somebody that would benefit from this information, please be sure to share this video along. I'm also really active on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. I'll leave all my social links down below, including my website, where I'll have a link to the type of lathe that I use and some great merch like this that also comes in t-shirts and coffee mugs and more. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Now, get up and get making.